Welcome to Talk About Topeka, I'm Chris Schultz. Tonight, we have three people involved with the Aaron Douglas Art Fair. I take great pride in Topeka being such a vibrant art city and these guys are helping to bring it close to the entire community. After that, I'll talk with Brady Height, one of the owners of Legacy Motors. They're kind of a renegade independent car lot, uh, like the one whose police chief demands their badge and gun for being a loose cannon uh, when it comes to excellent pricing. This episode is sponsored by the WIBW channels and The Break Room, downtown's best spot for a hot lunch, and you've got to try Chef Michelle's new pastries. It all starts right now. This is the eighth year for the Aaron Douglas Art Fair. Tell us a little bit about the evolution uh, through the process. Well, the art fair itself was started kind of in response to the mural which is at 12th and Lane in Topeka, the Aaron Douglas mural. And that was put together by the Topeka Turnaround Team, kind of as a celebration of Central Topeka and the community. The art fair was started, like you said, eight years ago. And um, it was basically just a celebration. And it's kind of evolved. We've added music since then. We've added the kids' activities since then because it originally was just an art fair. And we've added a second stage, which is our legacy stage. And that's actually in front of the mural where um, we have acoustic performers and, and readings by local celebrities and things like that. Neighborhood in improvement associations like Elmhurst, College Hill, Chesney Park, Tennessee Town, they provide the food booths. Mm -hmm. um, nobody is a for-profit food vendor. They're all nonprofit neighborhood associations and things like that. And so it really is a celebration of the community and it's and it's evolved to become a, a, what's a really great event. What's your involvement with the Aaron Douglas Art Fair? I am the art director. This is my third year as the art director. Um, a lot of what I do is recruit the artists um, as much as I can um, and kind of organize how they participate in the fair. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of booth assignments and, and making them understand how the art fair works because a lot of the artists that, that we have at the fair um, might not have been a part of an art fair before and they don't know you know a lot of times how to set up a booth what what it entails how to price their work how to collect sales tax that type of thing right um, and so that's basically what I do is is work with the artists so tell us a little bit about your involvement with the Aaron Douglas Art Fair. Okay, I do the interactive art and basically what that is is that I provide an opportunity for the people to come out and get a hands-on experience with art. Um, last year we did artist trading cards which was a huge hit and brought some knowledge to the community about that. Um, this year since there's a huge growth in mural projects, the idea that Aaron Douglas created a wonderful piece of art that we have made a mural out of for Topeka. We are going to focus our interactive arts on creating a mural. So you won't necessarily have something to take home, but you'll be a part of something that will be featured for Aaron Douglas Art Fair activities in the future. So, Excellent. And what's your favorite part of the Aaron Douglas Art Fair that it brings to the Topeka community? I think what it brings to the Topeka community is um, more or less my favorite part is the art. Um, the fact that it allows people to see art in, a, in an outdoor venue mm -hmm. um, on a usual, what's usually a beautiful September day uh, in central Topeka. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and central Topeka doesn't have a lot of events like that, and so it's nice to see something like that happening there. What is your favorite aspect that the Aaron Douglas Art, Bra Art Fair brings to Topeka? I love the fact that the Aaron Douglas Art Fair gives you the opportunity to come in as a community member and enjoy the art that we have out there and bring your children so they can participate in activities. We create lots of different activities for the patrons of Topeka so they can have an opportunity to enjoy art hand, hands on. Um, and I think that's really important for me as an artist to be able to show people how to create art. A lot of times you find people that are scared to work with paintbrushes or just get their hands in there. And so by having, for example, interactive arts, we give them a chance to do things that they normally wouldn't have done in the past. And we found that a lot of times 
we also inspire people in the community to go out and want to try to do some art. So I think it's a great way to involve the community in art and bridge that gap. So what's your favorite piece that the Aaron Douglas Art Fair brings to the Topeka community? Uh, first and foremost, I would say that it's free. Um, it is an opportunity for people that uh, I would say non-traditionally don't go to art fairs, have an opportunity to go to an art fair free of charge, look at the artist's work, um, experience some good food, listen to some free live entertainment. Um, they can also, the, the kids zone is completely free. They can design posters, they can design their own Aaron Douglas Art Fair t-shirt. It's a black and white that the kids can color on with markers. Um, like I said, the face painting, the temporary tattoos, um, everything but the food is free. And the food is, uh, goes to benefit the Topeka NIA's uh, Neighborhood Appro Improvement Associations. They get 100% of their proceeds. So to me, uh, an event like that typically would cost uh, there would be a ticket involved, there would be an admission gate. Um, so I really like that it's in central Topeka and right there um, in those neighborhoods that those people that might not go to any other art fair will definitely come to the Aaron Douglas. Yeah, I think it's really cool that it's free and it still does something for the community as well, you know, both financially and mm -hmm. building the community. Building the community and building a, an artist community also. Mm -hmm. um, I know that uh, coming up on its eighth year that there are a lot of artists that got their start at the Aaron Douglas Art Fair. That was their first art fair and now have gone on to be featured in bigger art fairs and um, gone out of state and, and I know that the, um, a lot of the artists have um, started their own studios and galleries. It is also not only a celebration of community but it is um, a way to uh, publicize diverse and emerging artists. Absolutely. Well it's a celebration of community. It's um, brought to, together by the Topeka Turnaround Team, um, which is kind of a collection of Central Topeka organizations. And what it does is it allows artists who have not, um, a lot of times, have not typically been a part of the art scene in Topeka to participate in an art fair, um, as well as uh, gives established artists a chance to show and, and sell their work. It also attracts a lot of people from the community that typically wouldn't go to an art event. Being a part of, the, part of the Aaron Douglas Art Fair gives us the opportunity to show our artwork in the future and branch out a little bit more than what we might have thought we were capable of doing. It's really a self-esteem self -esteem booster. Well, the Aaron Douglas Art Fair for me is an opportunity to volunteer. Um, I started uh, I served two years as an app fair volunteer with the Washburn Art Students Association, WASA, doing the face painting and uh, temporary tattoos. And then um, I got onto the committee and did a couple years as an arts and graphics um, person doing the posters and t-shirts and brochures. And now this is my second year um, as the Aaron Douglas Art Fair chair. So six years, um, my family, my kids have kind of grown up going to the art fair. And uh, it's just been a great opportunity for me um, as an artist to not just, uh, you know, I have never had a booth at the fair, but I've always been at the fair as a volunteer. So if you were going to tell our viewers and make a plea for why they should go and get involved with the Aaron Douglas Art Fair, what would it be? Well, I would tell them that you're not going to be able to experience anything like this anywhere else in Topeka, um, that this is the only art fair that gives you an opportunity to do hands-on art, includes children's activities, gives you live music. We do poetry at the Legacy Stage. Um, you can view local Topeka artists. Um, we've had up to 40 artists showing on the art fair. So, you know, you're not going to get this anywhere else in Topeka, and it would be a missed opportunity if you didn't. Uh, my plea would be, again, that it's free. Uh, it's a great opportunity to come out. It's a one-day fair. Um, it's on a nice uh, Saturday in September. Um, there's a lot of other activities going on that day, so it's something that you can make the rounds. Um, I would say that uh, the plea would be that, again, that you're going to get to uh, have some good food made by the local NIAs. You're going to listen to some great bands that are some local popular bands that perform. Our, one of our newer additions, I think it's in its third year, is the Legacy Stage, where we have uh, 
performances. We've had hula hoopers, or I mean, uh, uh, belly dancers, uh, yo-yo performers, uh, poetry readers, you name it. So there's, uh, there's just a gamut of uh, opportunities for all ages. Um, my son was 11 days old at the fair last year. So from 11 days old to 111, you can enjoy the Aaron Douglas Art Fair. It's a lot of fun. Long story short, um, there's music, there's poetry, there's dancing, there's art, there's interactive art, there's a kid's zone. It's free. It's, um, there's really not a reason to stay home that day. In fact, I think um, it'd be great if everyone knew about the fair and, and came out and brought their family. So what's on the horizon for the Aaron Douglas Art Fair? Um, well, definitely have a 10-year anniversary coming up in a couple of years uh, to continue to grow. I know that uh, as an Elmhurst, uh, I live in the Elmhurst neighborhood, um, there had been some discussion at one point that the Aaron Douglas Art Fair might move. Even though we want to grow, we want to stay by the mural at the Aaron Douglas Art Park. Um, in the beginnings, uh, there's some discussion of there was either eight or 12 or 14 artists at the, at the first fair. It's grown to over 40 artist booths. The food booths have also grown. The, the kids' zones activities have grown. So we would like to just continue to see it grow. And now that they, um, I don't know if you know, they've removed the, the, the uh, alleyway there um, mm -hmm. and planted fresh grass. And they've also improved the sidewalk and they've added an, an adjoining sidewalk so that you can kind of walk in front of the mural. So uh, not only has the fair grown, but the park itself has continued to grow. I think another um, <clears throat> example of something for the future would be to have other activities there because of the improvements that have now been made to that location there behind Dillon's. You know, if a family wanted to have a, a reunion or uh, some sort of little uh, acoustic music festival, I think it would be a good place um, for the community to continue to have events there, not just the Aaron Douglas. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, thanks to Michael, Aaron, and Stacy for joining us on the show and telling us all about the wonderful Aaron Douglas Art Fair. You should be there. Don't miss it. I'm here in the studio with Brady Height. He's one of the owners of Legacy Motor Company. How you doing, Brady? Doing good. How are you doing? Yeah, Chris? good. Thanks for coming by the, sh the show and talking about it here today. Uh, you are actually the first uh, automotive company we've had on the show, uh, and so we definitely wanted to be able to get that perspective here. Tell us nice. a little bit about Legacy and uh, you know how you guys got started. Yeah, well, Legacy started with a dream. We um, we had over 65 years in the business. Um, we started back in 2005. We um, all came from a big franchise here in uh, Topeka and uh, just decided there was a better way of selling cars. So um, we just had a dream of going out on our own and uh, and just doing our thing. And uh, basically how, how that came about is we just found a location in North Topeka and got it started in May of 05. And uh, we decided we wanted a, a supplemental location. So in August, we uh, opened up a location at Fairlawn, 701 Southwest Fairlawn. And, uh, we uh, just got right into it, got right into the fire, and uh, we kind of all knew the car business pretty well, but, you know, it, um, we decided we wanted a softer sale. We didn't, you know, we came from a big franchise where you, you were taught to push, 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 and, uh, you know, that kind of wore on you after a while, and um, so we decided we wanted a softer sale approach. We wanted to treat people the way that we'd want to be treated if we were out shopping for a car. And, sure. uh you know, and, and that came with uh, not being intimidating and wearing suits and ties. And, uh, you know, we just dressed, you know, casual like the customer coming onto our lot and uh, just wanted to make them feel at ease. So, Absolutely. Well, it's a, it's a great concept. I mean, people need to buy cars. It's one of those things people typically say, oh, I have to buy a car. And then you get excited about going and looking at cars. But, uh, you know, it's it's something that in, traditionally has been very difficult for people to do, uh, and I know I bought a car from you guys uh, several years ago. I think it was like right after you'd opened, and it was just I saw that difference. Yeah. It wasn't uh, you know it was kind of like yeah take it out for a spin and if you like it come on back and do I mean it was very nice yeah. and and I appreciated that so that yeah. was that's a 
you're definitely onto something there. Yeah. And I think proof is in the pudding because you've been there for eight years. Eight years, yeah. yeah. So yeah. tell us a little bit about in the eight years. We know that the, the market's definitely changed, and definitely. especially for for automobiles. Uh, what's it been like here in Topeka for the auto business? You know, it definitely comes with its ups and downs. But you, uh, you know, one thing when you've been doing it as long as we've been doing it, we've learned to adjust, and we've kind of learned what works and what doesn't work. And uh, with that, you know, the the cash for clunkers, you know, in in oh eight oh nine when Obama. At you know the used cars, they're destroying a lot of used cars, and that made it tough for buying cars at the auction. And we've had to kind of adjust our thinking to the kind of vehicles that work for us and work for our customer. And uh, you know, so we we adjusted and uh, we've done really well. And I think it's why we've survived the tough times. And uh, now we're starting to see the turn again. And uh, I think the used car market is on the rise again. And uh, but uh, you know, we don't do a lot of advertising. I think a lot of people know about us and they know what we're about. And uh, with that being said, word of mouth has been huge in Topeka. So, you know, I want to thank all of our customers out there who always keep us in mind when they're in the market for a car. And that's, you know, I think that's the secret to surviving this time. So Absolutely. You know, yeah. people like people that treat them like people, yeah. right, don't they? Yeah, so, exactly. I don't yeah. know. Uh, so, uh, Elsa, tell us about how maybe technology has changed. I know the first thing people do when they're looking for a car, they go online and start looking for cars. It's not like they're... I mean, do people still show up on the lot and saying, I just want a car. What do you have? Or do they say, I want this specific car here. This is what I'm looking for. Well, that's a great question, Chris, because I tell you, it has gotten very competitive. And, uh, you know, we're a, we're a bunch of old school partners. So we've had to learn the social media and we've had to learn Facebook and the, and the Internet and how it works. And, uh, and I tell you, in the last three years, we've come a long ways with the Internet. And uh, we probably do a third of our business on the Internet now. So, yeah, to answer your question, do uh, customers still come on a lot? Sure. We still have a lot of repeat referral business. But uh, we're getting a lot of customers from outside of our region. I mean, we've sold people from all the way from Canada to Seattle to Philadelphia. So, you know, it's the Internet's huge. And I think if you got the right vehicle and you got it priced right, and, uh, you know, the people will come and get it. And um, so that's that's been huge. And uh, thank goodness for the Internet because that's probably another reason why we've survived the market. So, yeah. <laughs> What about some tips from folks who are who are looking for cars? You know, maybe maybe their kids growing up and they're they're getting their first car. What what's some tips? What should people be looking for? How should they be shopping for this vehicle? You know, if you go on and look at our inventory, we've really we've really started um, directing our um, our focus on imports. Um, you know, the Hondas, Toyotas, Nissan. You know, when you've been doing this eight years on your own and you're buying cars at the auction weekend, and we act, a lot of times we're going two, three days a week to the auction, you learn really quickly the cars that work and the cars that you have problems with and the cars that you don't. And I tell people now, if you see it on our lot, we've probably had good luck with that particular car. If you don't see it, there's a good chance that we probably haven't had good luck with it. So, you know, if I, if I had a kid coming out and buying a car, you know, gosh, you just can't go wrong with a Honda, Toyota, Nissan product. You know, those cars just run for Ever. and mm -hmm. uh, they're very low maintenance and you know with us we also have a service facility so we work on people's cars not only the people that we sell to but also our personal cars and uh, with that being said we also do a lot of locating so if a customer is looking for a particular vehicle we have the, the means of going to the auction and finding exactly what they want we don't have the overhead like a big lot does sure. so our pricing is always going to be better our service is going to be better and you're just going to get a better experience with the Legacy Motor Company. So yeah, yeah. And who wants to buy from a guy in a suit anyway? <laughs> <laughs> Think the same thing. Think he wants 100 degrees I would outside. Trust him, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Yeah, I can't imagine being in a suit and tie when it's 100 outside, but I, I don't miss those days. <laughs> yeah. Only in air-conditioned studios for me. That's exactly. I come to work and everybody asks me, hey, are you going golfing today? Because yeah. that's my golf attire every day. And uh, so, no, I'm not golfing. I'm working. So, yeah. 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 Well, very yeah. good. So tell us how folks can uh, get in touch with you guys. you got a website. What's that? We do. We do. Uh, the best way to get in touch with us is the Legacy Motor Company. Um, it's actually LegacyMotorsTopeka.com is our official website. Uh, you'll find that there's 24, 25 pictures of every car online. There's also a video. So it's almost like coming to the lot and not being there. And you can walk around and just do a, virtu a, a, a 3D virtual tour of that particular vehicle inside, outside. Mm -hmm. And um, so you, you can do a lot of product knowledge on, on our website before you even come in and see us. And then, of course, our numbers and uh, you know on there. And uh, we're really easy to get a hold of. We have our email address on there, too. So... Um, you know, email us, call us, um, get online, but definitely do your research and find out what you want and, uh, and we'll help you.
All right. Well, you know, I'm glad you guys are around, uh, making the decision a little bit easier for folks who have to buy a car. I mean, it's something we all got to do, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You're right. Well, I definitely wish you all the best of luck and uh, with everything you guys have been doing. And congratulations. Eight years is quite, uh, you know, you've already made it past the hump that most people so yeah, exactly it's went by fast and hopefully we'll be here for a long time to come so. absolutely well you know yeah. i can't let you go until we do the notorious lightning round all right uh, that's where i ask you <laughs> great uh, some of those silly personality questions okay. you might hear in an interview uh, <laughs> see nice. where we end up at all right we're gonna put 60 seconds on the clock and go if you could bring a dead celebrity back to life and ask them one question who would it be and what would you ask i think i'd probably ask john wayne um you know, and and I'd probably um, ask him, um, you know, how he um, put up with half the people stuff he put up with back then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big Western guru guy, so yeah. Uh, this is a perfect question for you. If you were a car, what kind of car would you be? I'd probably be like my son. He loves Ferraris, and uh, I have a need for speed, so I'd probably be a Ferrari. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, can't go wrong with a Ferrari. You cannot go wrong with a Ferrari now. <laughs> uh, let's see. If you took a weekend staycation in Topeka, what would you do? Oh, gosh. You know what? I, I, I enjoy spending time at home. I enjoy spending time with my son. But, uh, you know, if I was here, I'd probably find a nice little bed and breakfast place here that I've never visited and, and uh, try something different and... Uh, Maybe try a small mom pa restaurant that I've never eaten at and, uh, and try that. So, yeah. Absolutely. And uh, what, what was your first job? My first job was uh, I was a manager for Foot Locker. For, I, I sold retail shoes. All right. So. And, and our time is, is up now. But one yeah. final question. What's your favorite television show to watch every Tuesday night at 930 on my TV? <laughs> Talk about the peak. Of the hey, hey, there we go. <laughs> hey, Brady, thank you hey, so thank much. Thank you, Chris. Hey, appreciate good it. luck. Good so. luck. We'll come down and see you next time we need a car. Hey, sounds great. I appreciate it. <laughs> this woman got her shoes back. What? Thanks again to Michael D. Allen, Stacey Dawn, Aaron Mays, and Brady Height. This episode was sponsored by the WIBW channels and The Break Room, downtown's best spot for a hot lunch, and you've got to try Chef Michelle's new pastries. Tell us what you think of tonight's guests online. Uh, check out the Topeka newsletter for local events, and it'll just plain warm my heart if you keep talking about Topeka. <laughs>